Welcome to the quick start tutorial for Phoenix FD for 3ds Max. In this video, we look at how geometry objects can be used as solid and non-solid bodies inside simulations to control interactions with objects such as spaceships crashing into water. Now, we'll start a blank scene, and I'll create a sphere with a radius of about 12.5 centimeters, though the exact size is not crucial here. With the sphere still selected, click the Large Scale Smoke Sim Preset icon in the toolbar. In the Modify panel, Grid Rollout, adjust the sim's resolution by clicking the Decrease Resolution button a total of six times to get a total cell's size of about 5,000 voxels to have faster feedback. Then, disable the Adaptive Grid and set the size of the simulator along the x-axis to about 20. Set it to 60 in the Y and Z axes. This way, we'll have a flat simulation at a very low resolution that will resolve quickly. Maximize the viewport to get a better view. Now, create a box and place it above the sphere and slightly off to the side like this. Go into the time configuration and change the end at time to 1000 so that we have more frames to play with. Go ahead and start the simulation. Now, in order to see better how the smoke interacts with the simulation, go to the preview panel and under GPU preview, turn off enable in viewport. Then enable draw just a slice with the axis set to X. Now we can clearly see that the smoke collides with the box and goes around it. And we didn't really need to do anything to make that happen. That's just by default, meshes are treated by Phoenix FD as what are called solid objects, which means the object becomes an obstacle to the fluid's motion. Now, a word of advice here to make sure that any mesh you want to use like this should be closed. Don't use planes or flat sheets of geometry. If you need to use flat geometry, you can always use the shell modifier to make that geometry into a closed volume to use in the sim. Change your view to wireframe. The inside of the object is empty and the smoke clearly goes around the volume. Now select the object and right click on it and select Phoenix FD properties. Here you see there's a checkbox for solid object that is enabled by default. Now go ahead and turn it off and click OK so that the smoke will pass right through the box as you can see it doing here. Now this box is a non-solid which means the box is a part of the simulation but will not interact with it. Now, before we move on, there's another way to make objects not interact with the simulation, which offers different results. Through the simulation's modify panel, go to the interaction rollout, and there you can manage objects that do or do not interact with that simulation. The difference between a non-solid object like we have right now and making an object excluded from interaction, like through the UI I just showed, is that a non-solid object like this can be used as an emitter, or by forces, or as a render cutter, or birth volume, for example. Excluded objects through the interaction rollout will not interact with the simulation at all. Now, we'll make the smoke inside the non-solid box disappear. Right click for the Phoenix FD properties and enable the clear inside option. This lists the different channels of the sim that are affected. You can edit this list to control what is cleared inside the non-solid by changing the text inside. Click OK and you can see that the smoke inside the box is gone. Now the difference between the solid object that we had before and this non-solid with clear inside is that the fluid moves around solids but passes right through non-solids. This way you can use non-solids with clear inside to erase smoke, temperature, liquid, or different particles from certain areas of the simulator without affecting the fluid's behavior. Create another box in the scene that's similar to size to the first one. Move it up inside the container in the path of the smoke and it actually traps some of the smoke inside its volume. When creating or moving a solid object inside a fire smoke simulation container, it can trap fluid channels inside it, but that does not apply to liquid simulators. 
Now, in moving this box around some more, you can see that some of the smoke trapped inside the volume earlier is still stuck inside, and it may capture more. Again, that's because by default, all objects are treated as solid objects, so the smoke cannot escape once it's inside. So right click on that second box, choose Phoenix FD properties, turn on clear inside and press OK and the smoke is gone from inside that box. Now finally, select the first box and disable the clear inside so the smoke goes right through it. Now the box on the left is a solid object and the box on the right is a non-solid object. Now let's see what that means a little more. Moving the non-solid box inside the simulator does not change the behavior of the simulation. But if I move the solid object box, it affects the smoke simulation. You can see right here how the smoke gets pushed to the side. Now you can control how strongly a moving solid affects the simulation. Again, from its Phoenix FD properties using the parameter motion velocity effect. Now, let's see some of this in action. We're going to crash a spaceship into a body of water. Just don't tell my insurance company and we'll be okay. We're going to use solids and see how the motion velocity effect works and how we can work with foam and splashes in our simulation. You can start with the scene file spaceship crash 2016 start.max. So here we have a spaceship crashing into the ocean. Here's our ship and our ocean. And this geometry plane is just for preview purposes for the animation. So I'm going to go ahead and hide it. And let's create a Phoenix Ocean. Choose the Set Up an Ocean preset from the Phoenix FD toolbar. Select it and make it a bit smaller with a grid size of 150 by 150 by 93. And then click to decrease the resolution twice to have a lot faster feedback. Position the simulator a little bit more like this, moving it closer to the camera in Y, and then a little lower in Z. In the Modify panel, Dynamics Rollout, change the scene scale to 0.04 because this ship model is actually smaller than what the ocean preset expects. Okay, stop the simulation around here at around frame 68 or so. I'll go into the perspective view for a second so I can scrub the simulation and take a look. So when the spaceship crashes, it makes a pretty small splash, not quite the dramatic effect we're going for. Now, since the animation is already complete and approved, this is going to be the speed of the crash. So we'll need to adjust the simulation to react more toward a more massive splash. Select the ship and right click for the quad menu and select Phoenix FD properties. Here is the motion velocity effect parameter that I mentioned before, and this will make the simulation act as if the speed of the ship is multiplied. So entering a value of 5 means that the ship will affect the splash as if it were moving 5 times faster than its animation actually is. I'll reposition my grid a bit to better center the splash down, and then I'll start the sim. Now, as I elapse about two minutes of sim time, you can see a much bigger and more dramatic splash. Stop the sim, perhaps around frame 35, and scrub the animation a bit to study the new splash. You can see that there are some particles that are going outside of our simulator. Now let's say we don't need these splash and foam particles outside the simulator grid, since that's going to speed up the simulation to not calculate them outside. So let's go ahead and delete them. Go into the Create panel and create a box. Make it taller than the simulator and place it a little bit like so on the side of the grid, making sure to overlap the grid on the side to help guarantee that it can clear those errant particles before they leave the grid. The plan is to delete only the foam and splashes particles and leave the liquid particles unaffected. Right click on the box and choose Phoenix FD Properties. Uncheck Solid Objects so the box won't affect the simulation. And turn on Clear Inside and then type in Foam, comma, Splashes to clear only those types of particles from the sim and then press OK. Start the sim again and I'll elapse about 10 minutes of time and you can see that the particles that were going through this side are killed. But I promise they didn't feel anything. Now, we do have a few rogue particles still coming from the bottom and from the other sides, but we can always make more of these kill boxes to take care of those as well. 
Now let's look at the camera view and see how the splash looks when we render it out. Now for a few rendering tips. Open the Scene Explorer. Select the foam object here and change the mode parameter to point and then change the mode for the other foam object as well to point. This speeds things up quite a bit for the rendering. In the point rollout, change the point alpha to 0.3 and the shadow strength to 20. Again, do this for both the foam objects and then close the scene explorer. This makes the particles look more opaque in the render, making them look nicer. Open render settings and render out the view. Pretty quickly, you can see the ocean, the splash, and a giant green box. So let's stop the render and let's try that again. We're going to right click on the box and choose object properties. Disable renderable for the box and now we can actually render the scene properly. I'll elapse some time here and we can see a splash for our spaceship. And here is the simulation and the full rendered animation. Thank you for joining us for this quick start video on solid and non-solid object interactions using Phoenix FD for 3ds Max.